Hello everyone. If you are studying Python um, as part of the, the technologies track for this class, this is your Python exercise. What we're going to do this week is learn how to do linear um, regression in Python. Um, it's not terribly different from linear regression in R. Um, there's a couple different things that you do. Um, and really, you know, some of the stuff we learned last quarter, how to do linear regression, logistic regression, clustering and classifiers, it's all the same stuff in Python. It's just different commands to get you there. So what I've done is I've prepared two scripts, and these two scripts, I'll post both of them to the class, um, but both the, these two scripts, one of them is really just to show you kind of how things work, and the second one really is to show you how you can make uh, linear regression work for you in Python. This first script is very, very, very simple, and um, and I want to uh, point out a couple of things. What we're going to do is we're going to basically take two arrays. One of them is going to be called Y, the other, is, the other one is going to be called X. And we're going to plot them against each other. And then we're going to add a trend line that shows you kind of how we could sort of do linear regression. And then we'll take it one step further and we'll actually print out kind of a, a polyfit or poly polynomial fit, which is basically a linear fit. And it's going to give you a slope and an intercept. Um, and then we'll just take a look at the plots down below. But let me run through the commands first um, because they're fairly simple. So we need NumPy for this one. And in the past, we've done import NumPy as NP. And then we have to put NP at the beginning of every command. Um, here we can just do from NumPy import everything. And then we don't have to put NP at the beginning of the command. So the advantage to that is that there's some functions where you don't have to specify um, kind of the PLT or the NP or whatever, whatever library that you're importing. Um, but this is just a different way of being able to do it. We could do, you know, import NumPy as NP, which is kind of standard convention, and then just put NP in front of everything. Um, but I am going to do it this way because this is the way that I, I think will work better. Okay, so the second command, we're doing the array. We'll go ahead and run this as we go. Run this. Fine, done. Second command, we're building a y array, which is going to be these values, 0, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.8, 2.4, and 2.6. Then we'll build the x array, which is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and six, or 5. Um, go ahead and run that. And we have to import matplotlibpyplot. And I did the same thing here. I did, instead of doing import matplotlibpyplot as PLT, I just did from matplotlibpyplot import everything. Okay. So I did that, and then I just ran the XY plot. And it runs the XY plot, okay? which is basically just a line plot. When you run a plot in matplotlib, it always defaults to a line plot. And if you want to run a scatter plot, you just have to change the setting of the plot. Okay. Now we're going to load in another package. Um, this is SciPy, and we're going to actually load in part of it called interpolate. And this is what's going to allow us to do the linear regression calculations. So from scipy.interpolate import everything. Okay, and then we're going to set a variable p1 equal to polyfit, which is part of the scipy interpolate. And that's what's going to give us, we're going to take a look at x and y, and the one is a setting that basically says do a linear regression or a one-factor regression. And so P1 is going to be equal to the result of this polyfit. So we'll go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and keep up with these. Run that. And then we're going to print what comes out in P1. And what comes out in P1 are our slope and our intercept. Okay. So if we go down here and look at our plot, we're we'll jumping ahead a little bit here. But if we go down here and look at our plot, we see that the lines are a pretty straight diagonal line from the lower left to the upper right. And that it does start down here at what looks to be 0.5. So 0.5. Um, Eh, not really, actually. That's the intercept. But the intercept is, oh, sorry, the 0.5. That's the slope. The intercept is 0.15, and that looks like it could be 0.15, um, pretty close to 0.15. And then the intercept, of course, is how how, how much the slope goes up. Um, this matplotlib inline allows us to, um, it's a setting that allows us to write things to plots that are already open. Um, it's arguable as to whether or not it's even necessary. I threw it in there because it was in the example that I was looking at. So we can either use it or not use it. Um, I think it probably would work fine without it. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and replot this with uh, the dots that we want. Um, and we looked up here and we had the um, line plot. But now we're going to come down here and we're going to do plot x, y, and then we use the o's because we want the little dots to be a scatter plot. So we'll go ahead and run that. And it gives us our scatter plot. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run this again. It's actually going to run it again. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to actually put a trend line in there. And the trend line is going to be based on the values that came out of the poly plot or the poly, what is it, poly, um, 
polyfit, where we got this the slope and intercept. We just use the value that came out of polyval that came out of that, and we plot that on top of the lines. So let's go ahead and do that. And we get our trend line, and it looks like it's pretty close to our dots. It's also at our slope and intercept. We can see better our slope and intercept on this. And that's the simplest way to do linear regression. And when I say it's simple, it's simple because we created the arrays, and then we ran the poly fit, and then we plotted everything out and looked at it. Okay? It's simple, but it's useless. So let's go ahead and take a look at a different linear regression. And this one is based on the script I gave you last week. The script I gave you last week has you loading in a data frame. And when you load in that data frame, you then can make manipulations on the data frame, do some plots and the like. Um, but we're going to take it one step further. Um, we're going to take part, I, I cut out some of the plotting, I, the heat map and all this stuff is gone. And I've named, I kept the named variables x, y, and z. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to run the, uh, the linear regression using some fields that you're familiar with because this uses the Boston housing data set. So <clears throat> let's run through the early parts of this. We're going to use pandas. So from pandas, import everything. We're going to use matplotlib pyplot, and we just imported that as PLT, so that's standard convention. From numpy, import everything. From scipy, interpolate, import everything. And then OS is just to set your current working directory. I just left that in from the previous script. Now, these have been changed from the last time you ran it. So you're going to want to use your new copy of the script. I went ahead and set the, the directory that I want, and I can go out and get the file that I want. Um, I can set the options so that I can have maximum rows of 999, and I can have maximum columns of 20. That, both of those far exceed the parameters that we'll need. I can go out and get to my DF, my data frame, equal to PD read CSV bostonhousing.csv. <clears throat> That's the same as we had last week. And then I can print the first three rows and print the last three rows, and I can set my variables. X is going to be equal to data frame med value. Y is going to be equal to data frame rooms, or average number of rooms. And Z is going to be equal to data frame age. Here's where things get different, okay? I took a variable called P1, and I set it equal to NP, which is numpy, which I, do we need that? We may not actually need that NP, because I imported everything from numpy. So that may cause us problems when we run through this, but we'll, it doesn't look like it does. So we'll go ahead and keep that. And then um, we'll print the P1, which is basically going to give us our slope and our intercept. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and print the, uh, the lines. Um, we'll print our first plot, which is going to be X and Y. Now, let's, what is X and Y? Let's go back and remind ourselves X is median value and Y is rooms. So this is going to be a much more involved plot because there's 506 values for median value and 506 values for room. So we print the plot, we're going to print the 506x plus the 506y, and we're going to use the dots for a scatter plot. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and print a poly value line, the trend line, using a red dashed line. That's what the r dash means in that command. And it will allow us to see the visual of what the trend line would look like. Okay. Then we can go through and add a title. This is going to be rooms as a function of median value. And we did the same kind of font and font size as we did in the graphics one we did last week. Then we'll go ahead and do the um, X label, which is median value, and the Y label, which is rooms. And then we'll do the plot show, which is to actually show us what we're looking at. Um, let's run that so far, um, that chunk so far. We just run that first chunk, and it does. Here's the top three. Here's the bottom three. Here's the slope and intercept. And here's the graph that we asked for. We wanted the 506 rooms plotted against the 506 median value and a trend line that was thrown in the middle of them. So when we look at that, we can say that does median value, which is what we're using as the predictor variable, rooms as a function of median value, does median value do a good job of predicting how many rooms will be in a house? Looks like it could, but it also looks like there's a lot of variability out there, some maybe even outliers, but anyway, some variability in there that's going to throw us some curves. But when we got it, or when we did it, we got information that will allow us to test out our model. So now we have a model, okay? Remember, this is your slope. Your slope is pretty pretty sort of flat, and your intercept is 5. And if you come down here and look at your trend line, your trend line intercepts at around 5, 5.08 by the time it gets down here. Um, and then your uh, slope looks like it is uh, fairly uh, fairly uh, small, but that is as a function of single units, and median value is measured in, in more than single units. So we'll see how that, that plays out. All right, what we did when we did this in R is we took the slope and we took the intercept and then we took the X value 
and we created a new variable. We created a new variable in our data frame called predict or predicted or whatever we called it. That's the same thing that we're, what, as what we're doing here. We're going to come down here, and in our data frame called df, we will name a new variable or a new column, and that new column is going to be in single quotes, and we're going to call it PRED for prediction. And it is going to be set equal to the intercept, which is 5.08, blah, 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 plus x, which we named up here, x is equal to median value, because that was what the predictor was, or x was our median value, times the slope. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, that's done. And then we can say, oh, we're going to set a new variable now. P is going to be set equal to the predictor variable. So that P value will have 506 predicted values in it. And we'll do that out of convenience. Okay. And then we're going to set an error. So we're going to create a new variable called error. And same with thing we, same thing that we did with predictor. The variable error is going to be populated by taking the variable Y, which is the actual number of rooms minus the predicted number of rooms. And so how far off are we on our prediction that this, this field will tell us. So DF error, we'll go ahead and create that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print just the, um, from the data frame, just the variables that I care about. And this was a little tricky because it doesn't seem to make real good sense, but we're going to go ahead and print from the data frame. And for some reason, this command needs double brackets. So we have double brackets and it's the, each of the field names are column names, which is RM in single quotes, comma, PRED in single quotes, comma, followed by error in single quotes, comma, double bracket again, and the whole thing wrapped in parentheses. I actually had to look this one up because this one does not, was not intuitively sensible to me. So we run that and it gives us our data. Visually, we can look at room versus prediction and see that they look okay. They look pretty good. The first couple look like they're, we did a pretty good job in making our prediction. The median value was a pretty good predictor for the number of rooms. Okay, And if we look at error, error looks pretty small as well. So we can go through and see sometimes some of the errors are positive, some of the errors are negative. That's what we would expect. We probably have an equal number of positive and an equal number of negative, or pretty darn close. Okay, But that gives us just our, our data frame, part of the part of our data frame that we care about. So I'm going to come down here and I want to, I want to calculate um, mean squared error. Remember there are five, and if you look at the book, there are five different ways of being able to calculate error. And what I had you do when we did this in R was just plain old averaging the error. Um, that turns out to be not all, all not all that useful because what when you when you do the mean of the error and you add everything up, all the negatives and positives cancel each other out, and you get a really, really small number. So when we do mean squared error, the first thing we do is we square the error, and then we take the average of that. By squaring the error, we get rid of the um, the negative signs. And so we're really just measuring the actual distance from the mean, whether it's positive or negative, and treating them both as positive. So we set a variable called MSC, which is for mean squared error, and that's to be set equal to mean, which is a function in Python. And what we're calculating is we're calculating the mean of, and we specify DF for data frame, and then we also specify the field that we want, which is error. And then after that, we have to square it. So we have to in the parentheses for df, where the df starts, all the way to the other side where the parentheses closes it out, or parentheses closes it out. That's how we indicate that we're taking that field and we're squaring it. So all 506 values of that field get squared. You would think that it would be a caret 2, which we would use um, every other computer language uses to square something, but for some reason in Python, it's asterisk, asterisk 2. So we take error and we square it, and then we take the average of it, and we drop that into a variable called MSC or mean squared error. And then the next thing we do is we print it. And that's the value that we get. Let's go ahead and run those. And we get 0.2544. So that's a pretty small difference, right? That's the mean squared error. Either higher or lower, that's the average distance from the mean. That seems pretty small. Um, so that tells me that we either got a really good model or we've got some maybe fairly good model with some outliers um, that might be kind of throwing it off. So here's where we can actually determine how close our model is or how good our model is. And it turns out to not be so good. So we have already named these variables, the variable y and the variable p. y is the actual number of rooms and p is the predicted number of rooms. So we're going to write a correlation coefficient between y and p. And this is what we get back. We get about a correlation of about 0.7, which isn't great, actually. It's not, it's not terrific. Um, 
And so this might be one where we, it would be a good candidate for us to do a multiple regression and be able to sort of pick more than one field to help sort of kind of cut out that, you know, 0.3 or 30 percent of the variability that we're not able to project. But it's, it's, it's okay. It's not great. It's okay. okay. Let's go ahead and run that correlation coefficient. It gives us that value that we could run into the next one here. Now we're going to plot. Remember last time in R when we ran the predicted versus the actual, we actually ran a couple of plots and took a look at it. Um, we've already seen that the correlation is only 0.69. So we're going to go ahead and plot this. Um, we're going to plot the actual number of rooms versus the predicted number of rooms. And we're going to use a scatter plot. We'll give it a title. We'll give X axis and Y axis labels. And we'll go ahead and show that value. And we get it. Um, we get that plot. And we can see why we've got a 0.69. Um, there's just too much variability there. There's, and if you look through, actually look through the data, you'll see that there are some errors that are quite large. And that's indicative of the fact that there are some predictions that are pretty far off. So our prediction turns out to be not as great as we would like it to be. But it does seem like it could be useful in the sense that, you know, we've got a 0.7 correlation. So we've got a pretty good chance of coming fairly close if we use the median value to predict the average number of rooms in the houses, in the neighborhoods, or the Boston housing data set. Okay. So here is your assignment. Let's go back up to the naming of the variables. I want you to do this whole thing all over again. Okay. And I have named variables X, Y, and Z, with X being median value, Y being room, and Z being age. I would like you to come up with uh, a couple of a couple of options here. The first option is just to take Z and involve Z somehow and see if you can use median value and age, uh, median value to predict age, or if you can use um, age to predict the number of rooms. Probably not. There probably isn't going to be anything there. Um, if you want to be really adventurous, pull in another field that I don't have listed there. Try to find something in the data file that I haven't used. It could be Knox. It could be low status. It could be uh, uh, teacher to pupil ratio, whatever you want to use. Um, you can set it up just like I have here. Just pick a different variable name and you go ahead and populate it with that. And then you run through and you do your polyfit and calculate your um, uh, slope and intercept. Um, I'd like to see some plots. Um, I, I basically, I'd like to see the script run the same way as I have run it. Um, but I want you to make the adjustments to account for the fact that you're using different, vari different variables. You also have to change the slope and intercept because those will no longer be relevant. So when you actually populate that other variable, you'll have to change all that. And, um, and then go ahead and drop everything that you output or capture in some way into a file or just send me your script um, and I can run your script, assuming that I have your data file, and see that your, your script works. Okay? If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.